So let's get started. As you'll see in the first session, we've really invested in enhancing the apps that you all know and love with an emphasis on improving the user experience. So I'm going to invite Eric Snowden, our Senior Director of Design, and Ash Wong, Senior Experience Manager, to come on up and take you through a fast forward of everything that we've done, the biggest updates that we've, we've brought to the key Creative Cloud apps. Eric and Ash, take it away. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. So Ash and I are excited to share with you a ton of updates to all the apps you know and love. Now, all the teams at Adobe have been really focused on performance improvements and experience improvements in all of your favorite apps, based directly on feedback from all of you. So I want to get started today in Adobe Illustrator. It's uh, one of my favorite apps. And if you've used uh, yeah, there's a couple people out there. Um, if you've used Illustrator in the past, you may have a layout, especially on a small screen, that looks something like this. Um, Illustrator is incredibly powerful, but can feel complex. I've got panels all over the place. There's a color panel in the lower right-hand corner. I don't know how that even got there. And so it can feel a little bit intimidating. Um, in this version of Illustrator, we have a new Essentials workspace and a new Unified Properties panel, which makes working in Illustrator much, much faster. Um, so if I select a piece of text, for example, you'll notice the Properties panel changes to show me just options for text. So I'm not chasing panels all over the UI. Um, at any point, I can dig in and get to my advanced options with one click. Um, so it's really much faster to work in Illustrator. If I select an image, I'll get um, relevant things for images on the right-hand side. Uh, again, it's just everything is contextually aware and makes working much, much faster. Now, speaking of working faster, Illustrator actually starts up 30% faster than before. And it's also gone from supporting 100 artboards to 1,000 artboards. So huge, huge performance increases in this version of Illustrator. So I'm going to leave Illustrator for one minute. I'll be back. And I'm going to head over to my phone to talk about Adobe Capture. So Adobe Capture is a mobile application that takes anything your phone's camera can see and turns it into a usable design object. So if I go ahead and launch Capture, I've got vector shapes. I've got color themes that I've captured from the real world. I've got materials that I can wrap around 3D objects to make them look realistic. I've got infinitely repeatable patterns. Uh, and I've got brushes that I can use in my favorite mobile and desktop drawing applications. But the feature I'm the most excited about is actually type capture. So I have this postcard, um, and I don't know what this font is on the back of it, but I want to use this in one of my designs. Type capture can help out with that. So if I launch my camera, and I point it at this card and take a photo, and then I'm going to adjust the crop a little bit. With one click, this gets sent up to Creative Cloud. And what's happening is Capture is using Adobe Sensei technology to analyze the font and give me similar fonts. And so I'm not just capturing the font. I'm actually capturing a full character style, which I can go in and edit. So maybe I want to make the font a little small, uh, larger than it was. I want to increase the letting just slightly, make it all caps, save. And when I save this, I'm saving it to a Creative Cloud library that Ash and I are both sharing. So at any point, either one of us can use this in any of our Adobe applications. So pretty, pretty cool. I'm going to head back over to Illustrator. And it looks like we're having a little bit of Wi-Fi trouble here. Um, so what's going to happen is this is actually going to sync the character style from Capture over to Illustrator. There it is in the first place there. I can zoom in to one of these artboards. I'm going to select this font, click on it and apply. So that's pretty cool. I went from having a font on a postcard to using an Illustrator in just a couple of clicks. Um, and the Illustrator, yeah. And the Illustrator team didn't stop there when it came to font enhancement. So another one of my favorite features is actually uh, color font. So if I go into my, um, my character styles menu here, I'm going to filter down to just my favorite fonts, another nice little shortcut, and select Gilbert Color Bold. And if I go and start typing, color fonts, you'll notice that every single character has a different color. You've got overlapping colors. You've got blend modes. That's because every glyph in this font is a color SVG. So it, it adds you know, a ton of expressivity to fonts. I can actually go and obviously edit this at any time. And then I can go and create outlines and revert this back to vectors to do more editing. So a lot of expressiveness in fonts in this version of Illustrator. Um, the last font feature I want to show is variable fonts. 
And so, yeah. So if I select a, a variable font here, and I go into my advanced options, you'll notice I have a ton of sliders. And so what's happened is the font maker has packaged up a ton of different families inside of one font. And I can actually scrub between different values. So if I change the weight here, and I can make it much thicker, and I've got exactly the control I want, and so this starts breaking onto two lines, which is not what I want. I can then change the width to make it fit. And I've got a ton of options here that are exposed by the font maker. I've even got, uh, I can change the serif height. So I can get into some really fine tuning of the font here inside of Illustrator, which is really awesome. OK, keep going. So the last feature I want to show, <laughs> yeah. uh, the last feature I want to show here is Puppet Warp. So I've got this illustration here, and I want to move the arm of this character by itself. And so you know, in the past, if I selected things and tried to move them, I'd get some kind of strange behavior going on. I've got a lot of overlapping complex vectors. Uh, Puppet Warp makes this really simple. If I select this illustration, and I select my Puppet Warp tool, I can add a pin to the shoulder, one to the elbow, and one to the hand. And that means certain parts of the illustration will move, and certain parts won't. So yeah. I can move the hand independently. I can move the hand and the elbow independently. It makes working an illustrator. It makes working an illustrator so much simpler with complex illustrations. All right, so I just went through a lot of things. I'm going to pass it off to Ash. She's got a ton more features to show you guys. Thanks, Eric. You all ready for some more features? Yeah. All right. We are going to start off here in Adobe Stock. Now, Stock is a collection of over 100 million images, videos, illustrations, templates, and more. And all of these assets work seamlessly with all of my creative tools. So let's see what's new in Search. All right, so I'm going to kick off an image search here. I actually have an image that I want to use already. I have a cute little lemur. But I don't love that he has his back to us. He's a bit of a rude boy. So let's find a lemur with a different posture. And with Stock, I can actually use that image to search, which is great. So what's happening now is Stock is using Adobe Sensei technology to analyze that image, figure out it's a lemur, and return back a bunch of lemurs, as expected. But of course, we want to find just the right lemur. So let's filter this down. So you can filter exactly how you would expect. You can go by category, by orientation of image. But I'm really excited about these two new features that the team has added. The first is the depth of field and the vivid color. And both of these also use Adobe Sensei. So you'll see here now, if I turn up the depth of field, we're going to get a lot of lemurs that are sharp in the foreground and blurry backgrounds, which is awesome. So if we like the look of this guy, we can take a little bit of a closer look. Of course, because this is an Adobe tool, all of these are super easy and integrated with our tools to use so. You can license this one, one click or save a watermark preview, and it'll just show up in our library just in case Eric needs a lemur for some purpose. All right, we are going to move on now from stock to Adobe Photoshop Sketch on the iPad. Now, this is one of my favorite, favorite apps. It's the best way to do natural media style paintings and drawings when you're on the go. As you can see here from our community examples, you can get a ton of different styles and different looks and feels all from this one app. Let's finish out a piece that I've been working on here. And the first new feature in Sketch is that you can now use all of your Photoshop brushes here in Sketch. So you'll see here, I'm really jazzed about Kyle Webster's drawing brush. It's really great. I have hundreds of brushes, and I can take them all with me. So let's quickly finish out this painting here. We're going to add a little highlight on this shirt just to make it look a little more dimensional and warm. Um, but because this is a live drawing demo, I'm going to take us to our second feature, which makes this truly a showboating experience, and that is time lapse, one of my favorite features. So with one tap, I can create a time lapse from this drawing. What's really awesome about this is that I don't have to download any software. I don't have to set up any cameras. I don't even have to know that I wanted to create a time lapse to begin with. With just one click, I can make this video. Sketch has been recording all of my brush strokes, so I don't have to do anything. And I can decide after I like the video, after I like the image, to create a video that I can easily share to social media or anywhere else that takes a movie file. All right, got to keep moving. We are going to jump into Photoshop. Now, there are a ton of new Photoshop features. I can only show you a couple of my favorites. The first one we're going to talk about is layer styles in libraries. Awesome new feature. So this text is looking a little plain. We're going to jazz it up a little bit with some 80s-tastic fun. Now, I can easily go ahead and add this to my library super easily. But what's awesome about having this 
here is that I can have this reusable repository of layer styles. So I can easily apply these across files. And I can even share these styles with Eric in case he needs to brand an 80s synth band in the near future. All right, layer styles and libraries, super useful. We're going to move right along. Uh, let's talk drawing and painting in Photoshop. So I want to point out first that I am on this beautiful Microsoft Surface Studio. And I've really enjoyed using the pen with it. But now the team has added dial support. So you'll see here now, I have all the options you'd expect. I can scroll, I can zoom, I can undo, and I even have these great brush options. And we're going to kick this off by zooming in a little so I can show you the next feature. OK. So the next feature is a new pen tool. It's called the Pen Curvature Tool. It's really, really handy. So when you're normally drawing shapes with the pen tool, here, this looks like business as usual, right? So you drop a couple of points in. What's really great about the pen curvature tool is you'll see as I drop this third point in, that curve auto extrapolates. That's great because I don't have to fight with handles. I don't have to make sure that the shape is perfectly symmetrical. I can just easily drop in points. And you'll see I have a shape, easy peasy, here. And of course, because this is drawn by a pen tool, all of these points remain entirely editable. So in a matter of seconds, I can make an easy, symmetrical shape with very, very, very little effort. OK, let's talk about brushes in Photoshop. So I've been painting for about a decade, and I have collected many, many brushes over the years. And it's always really hard for me to find exactly the brush that I'm looking for. It's actually great that we have this much space. I think this is the first time that I've seen all of my brushes all at once. I'm sure many of you have this problem. Well, finding that brush that you're looking for is now a problem of the past. So the Photoshop team has completely rethought brush organization. So you'll see here now we have this brand new panel with organized folders. And I can customize, rename these folders whatever I like. And as you see here, all of my brushes have previews. And everything is awesome. So I can find that brush that I have been using. So let's just double check that this is exactly the right size before I show you our very last feature, which is brush smoothing, one of my absolute favorites. OK, so we have an under sketch here. And so without brush smoothing, uh, my hand is a little shaky because I have 12,000 hovering art directors here today. So you'll notice as I'm drawing, the line's coming out pretty wobbly. And you'll notice as I'm drawing, I get these little tails at the beginning and end. And this is a problem I run into all of the time when I'm trying to outline or when I'm just trying to draw a smooth line. So let's try that again with new brush smoothing. So this is great. I can turn brush smoothing up as little or as much as I want. I'm feeling 63 today. Uh, whoops. And then you'll see here we have these great options. So first, we can adjust for zoom. That means Photoshop will know what zoom level I have and automatically adjust the smoothing based on my zoom level. The second one I wanted to make sure is turned on is stroke catch up. Let me show you what that does. So now as I'm drawing, you'll notice my stroke looks like it's almost being pulled along by a little string. So I can go as fast or as slow as I want. And that line is coming out super smooth, even though my hand is still really shaking because you are all still here. So easy peasy, finishing out the back of this card. Don't have to redraw anything, and it's coming out super smooth. You would never know that this was a live demo. <laughs> so again, all of these features that Eric and I just showed, I want to remind you that it's just a few, a subset of all the great features that the team has put out this year to really improve that experience in all of our apps. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wasn't that awesome? Thank you, Eric and Ash. I know that was a lot to digest, but there's really one key theme that I want you to walk away with today. No papyrus. Okay. <laughs> we couldn't help having a little fun with that. So, In all seriousness, I hope you saw very clearly how we're looking around the corners and driving new innovations even to your existing applications and bringing you the expertise that will help you accelerate your creativity. Before we move on to our design session, there's one more announcement I'd like to, to make. I'm glad Ash put away all those brushes. Um, Ash is a recovering brush hoarder. In fact, it took us a while to convince her to join us on stage for the demo. She kept brushing us off. Um, OK. I'm here all week. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, 
as a reco recovering brush holder, she just mentioned uh, award-winning brush illustrator Kyle Webster, the creator of all the Photoshop brushes that she's demonstrated today on stage, has, has decided to join us at Adobe. So Kyle signed up to, to join Adobe full time, and we, you'll now have access to all 1,500 of Kyle's handiwork in, as part of your Creative Cloud membership. So let's give them a round of applause.